We have Eleanor Brown to thank for setting the standards for interior design in America as a serious profession. Eleanor Stockstrom was born on February 12, 1890 in St. Louis, Missouri. Growing up, she attended private school in St. Louis. At the age of 15, she was sent to a finishing school at Briarcliff Manor in New York. After completion, she moved back home to St. Louis. While at home, she was taught to manage household budget, oversee a staff, and properly host social functions, ranging from afternoon tea to dinner parties. In 1914, she married Drury McMillan, a young engineer. They spent the following 10 years traveling for her husband's work, frequently traveling to South America, living in a New York brownstone in between work assignments. In 1916, their son Lewis was born. After a friend suggesting she come along, Eleanor started taking interior decorating courses at New York School of Fine and Applied Art, the now Parsons School of Design. While attending, she gained admiration of Frank Parsons, the director of the school, and was the star student of the entire faculty. She later was offered a postgraduate scholarship for six months of study at the new branch of the school in Paris. She accepted the scholarship but refused stipend for housing and travel so someone else could benefit from the financial aid. In 1924, she returned to New York and bought a townhouse on 55th Street and plans to use one day for her own decorating firm. Upon agreement with her father to aid finances of a future firm, she took classes at Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School to take basic business classes and bookkeeping. After graduation, she became assistant for Elsie Call Wilson, which only lasted for a few months. She then started her own firm, Macmillan Inc., in November of 1924, partnering with William Autumn, whom was one of her previous teachers from Parsons, to sell furniture from Paris. In her decorating career, she used her social connections to further her list of prospective clients. She did not merely arrange furniture and select colors and fabrics. What set her apart was her ability to work with the architectural components of a job. In 1928, she divorced Drury McMillan when their son was the age of 12. Seeing the need for keeping a relationship with both parents, they stayed friends after their divorce. In 1929, Eleanor hired her first assistant, Ethel Smith. Later, she continued to surround herself with the most talented designers she could find, almost exclusively from Parsons. Eleanor was intensely loyal to her employees and managed to weather the Great Depression without dismissing any of them. In 1934, she married architect Archibald Brown. Back when she opened her firm, she set out to be the first full-service decorating firm in America, and there is no question that she accomplished this. In the 1930s, her firm was amongst the first in America to use new furniture designs coming from Europe. With her forward-thinking attitude, along with the influence from her architect husband, Eleanor embraced new modern designs and would often incorporate modern pieces into her classic design. Macmillan Inc. was and continues to be one of the leading firms in residential decoration and holds a small share of corporate work. In the 1960s, corporate projects included interiors for NBC, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, the Cherry Chase Club, and the River Oaks Club. In 1976, Betty Sherrill, who had been with the company for 25 years, took over the presidency for Macmillan Inc. Ten years after the reorganization of the company, Eleanor died at the age of 100. Today, Macmillan Inc. is coming up to its 95th anniversary and is run by President Ann Pine. Honoring the legacy of Eleanor Macmillan Brown and adhering to her words, respect the past, enjoy the present, look forward to the future.